Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We've been discussing our criminal justice and prison system and what needs to be changed. Right now, we want to dig in deeper and meet a man who has experienced this firsthand. Step Frazier was behind bars, serving time for drug charges, and now he's free and joining us today. Step, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here today. Yes. So happy Thank to you. have Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, let's talk a little bit about how you ended up in prison and serving a life sentence. Let's go back to the beginning. Yes. In 1994, I was indicted by the federal government <coughs> for conspiracy to distribute crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. And me being indicted by the federal government, although I was a first time nonviolent offender, I received life imprisonment. Mm. Wow. The life imprisonment allowed me to be in the federal system and while I was in federal prison, I did as best as I could to try to help others because I realized what I had done. Mm -hmm. And so I set up programs, I would do fundraisers and things and just to try to make situations better for others because I realized that my activity, I didn't deny the fact mm -hmm. and I received life sentence and so I tried to make the best of my stay while I was there. Mm. Yeah. So, okay, 1994, you go to prison, you're 26 years old. Yes. And then you found out about the First Stepped Act in July of last year, correct? Yes. So talk about this act and the uh, impact that President Trump had on that. Yes, the first step, I, when it first came out, I initially didn't believe it helped any of us. Because what President Trump did, he took President Obama fair sentencing night and he applied it and made it retroactive. Meaning he applied it to those of us that was already incarcerated because when President Obama passed the fair sentencing night, it did not include us. Mm. It just uh, would allow those who was coming into, into the system to benefit. Okay. So President Trump, President Trump took Obama's law and made it to apply to those of us. Okay. Prior to me getting knowledge of it, um, I received a letter from the lawyer, my attorney, mm -hmm. and he informed me that the judge had asked him to take my case. And once he was assuring that I would be released, I had requested that I stay in prison 10 additional days should I get immediate release. Mm -hmm. And so the 10 additional gr days was granted. So I was granted immediate release on July 24th, 2019, and I was released August the 2nd. Why stay in for 10 days additionally? Because as she just made note to that, that I was 26 years old when I went into prison, <coughs> I spent 25 years in federal prison with those that I was incarcerated with, and they was my, they're my family. Mm. And so I wanted to assure them that I would continue to fight for them and raise my voice because back in 2016, I began to petition Congress on behalf of everybody under the crack cocaine disparity. Oh, yeah. And brothers and sisters throughout the system joined me. And I wanted to assure them that I was leaving to go home with my family, but I wanted to assure them that I'm gonna stay back with you 10 days mm -hmm. to assure you that I would continue this fight and I wouldn't let up. Yes, yeah. nice, nice. Why is it so important for you to be a spokesperson, a crusader for the falsely accused and in prison? And, and they shouldn't even be there. Why is it important? You could really be spending time with your family. Yes, most definitely I could be spending time with my family. I do the best I could to spend time with my family. But I understand that my voice, somebody don't raise their voice. This will stay quiet as I continue to sit in prison. I'm a first time offender. Mm -hmm. There are many black men and black women that sit in federal prison with life sentences under a law that don't exist any longer. Mm -hmm. Congress have admitted that they are wrong concerning the crack cocaine disparity. This been now 15 years that they have admitted that they was wrong, but nobody's willing to right this wrong. Mm -hmm. So as long as I begin to raise my voice concerning this and get others to join me, concerning that Congress can no longer sit quiet to something that you know target one group of people. Mm -hmm. Right, we understand that your story is not over just yet. There's a chance you could actually go back to prison. We'll talk about that right after this break. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We're back with Ted Frazier. Now, Stet, you uh, went from serving a life sentence to now being out here, thank God, with us. Yes. But one of the questions that, you know, we touched on family in the last, the last segment, and I just want to just want to kind of get in your mind about being gone along from your, uh, being gone so long from your life. Yes. Talk to us about some of the things that were lost wow. in those 25 beautiful. years. Beautiful family. Beautiful. I mean, oh you have God. eight beautiful children. Mm -hmm. You wow. know, you're 26 years old when you go in. Yes. What, talk, talk to us about what is missed. What is this, this injustice really doing to people? Well, the injustice really destroy a family. Mm -hmm. Because the time I miss with my children, 
it cannot be replaced. Right. It's an irreplaceable fight. The time I didn't get to see my mother but three times while I was incarcerated, she mm. passed in 2002, that time can never be given <sighs> back to me. Um, the system is set up and it's more like a warehouse. I try to give my, when I got out, I dedicated my time to my children and setting up my business. Mm -hmm. It was nothing about anything else. My children was my priority. What do you mean that it's, it's, it's like a warehouse? Talk to us about that. Because it's like a warehouse because it's, it does not transform human life. Right. An individual have to acknowledge their wrong and admit their wrong. Yes. They can only transform and begin to reform their life once they acknowledge their wrong. Mm. And it's a warehouse because it don't have an outlet. Mm. You just being placed in as a warehouse and moved around from institution to institution. Mm. So the system is set up as a warehouse today. Oh, so yes. it's really no reform then. Right. At all. Why do you think, well tell us why there, it could be a chance that you could actually go back. Because there's an argument that's going on between federal prosecutors and federal judges. The federal judge is saying because I was indicted on 50 grams or more of crack cocaine, that sentence ran 10 to life. Today, 50 grams or more on the President Trump First Step Act is five years to 40 years. The prosecutor is arguing that because at sentencing the judge held me accountable for so many kilograms of crack cocaine, that is the controlling of my sentence. So the judge is saying no, it was the indictment. The indictment controls, you have to get the indictment and judicial fact finding is something come after based off of what you was indicted on. So the prosecutor is, has my name on a list to place me back in federal prison. And my case is in the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. There are four circuits that has ruled in our favor saying the indictment does control and that's the 4th Circuit, the 5th Circuit, the 6th Circuit and the 8th Circuit. Should the 11th Circuit, 11th Circuit Court of Appeals disagree with that, then I will have to go back in federal prison they were see, uh, continue my life sentence. Well, t tell us the difference in the sentencing for, for crack cocaine and powder cocaine. Yes, crack cocaine and powder cocaine, there's a hundred to one disparity that we was being sentenced on. Mm -hmm. The hundred to one disparity is simply as this, uh, 50 grams or more was 10 to life. So when you get to sentencing, they say at least one kilogram and a half of crack cocaine, which street value is $40,000. That equates to 150 kilograms of powder cocaine, mm. which is millions of dollars. That's how we've been sentenced. This law don't exist any longer, but you still have black men and black women sitting in prison on the law that does not exist any longer. Yeah, which is goodness. ridiculous. My goodness. Seth, thank you so much for telling us your story. You did it so beautifully and eloquently. You can keep up with his story by following him on Instagram at Time Stet Frazier.